G'day everyone and uh, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm making these uh, head studs for my little air compressor conversion and uh, these are about five inches long and I was giving us a stack of these for free um, by a guy recently and I'm just putting them to good use. Uh, I've got my bison collet chuck here with a 5C collet in it to hold it. Uh, these studs are about eight millimeters in diameter and I'm holding it roughly at about two inches so 50 millimeters out from the collet and I'm just going to slowly work away at it and get it down to size now like I said it's currently at eight millimeters I need to get it down to six millimeters which is just you know shy of a quarter of an inch the reason I'm doing it this way is because the live center on the tailstock was in the road and roughly when I machined in the middle I had deflection from the part and I ended up you know with the uh, sort of having a tapered surface on the top. Right, it's just some uh, basic roughing out here, some parallel turning, uh, getting the bulk of that material off. Just speeding up the footage here, just so I don't bore you, and uh, running it at 200%. You can hear my cold chest is pretty flat out. I think I had it up around 2,000 RPM for this job, and that's just the carbide tip tool that I'm currently using. Right, I'll stop the lathe now and just check that size, see what I'm up to, or what I'm down to, and you can see I'm just shy over six millimeters, so 6.1 or 6. Point, a bit hard to see the micrometer here from that. Yeah, so 6.05. So I'm uh, still up a little bit, so I'll leave it up, and that way then I can limit it down to size. So it's, these are not critical dimensions. These are not a shaft. It's not a bearing surface. It's just purely a head stud that goes through the cylinder head. As you can see now I've extracted it and pulled it out a bit further and then having a crack at the second half. In a minute here I'll stop the lathe and undo the collet chuck and extract that to the last one and this is the stage where I'll put the uh, live centre up the backside of the shaft to hold it all straight because I've got a fair bit hanging out at the moment. There's about three inches hanging out from that collet chuck so that's about 75 millimetres. Once again just eating away at it. I'm, I'm not taking big cuts on this um, and the reason, the main reason is obviously part deflection, so I thought I'd just sneak up on it gradually, just take a series, roughly I think I'm using about three cuts to get down to size. I ended up making five of these, and the reason I made five is because just in case I broke one or something like that, so I had a spare one up my sleeve. Just uh, hitting that with a bit of emery at the moment, just to limit it, and then coming with the micrometer, and you can see those sizes there. So, the first section and middle section, I've got uh, six millimeters in the dot. That side there is a little bit proud, but I wasn't worried about that because that's the fatter end where the M8's got to be uh, threaded onto it. And there's a photo of that lovely bison collet chuck you can see there that Paul Frink sent me over. Thank you, Paul. Alright, so I've spun it around, I've actually taken the collet chuck off and put the three jaw back on and this is the little um, button die uh, tapping head that, that, that I made at university of all places, believe it or not, and um, it's been really handy to have in my toolbox and I actually forgot I had it, I dug it out of the cupboard and luckily I wrapped it up and it's still pristine, I made it about 20 years ago. So here we are just with a 8mm 1.25 pitch thread and uh, that manoeuvre there looked a bit funny it's because I was advancing the saddle and the camera is actually attached to the saddle with a magnetic base. And we'll just undo that and I'll speed this footage up here so you guys aren't bored.
just backing that button die all the way off now. And just got the old cold chest from reverse and there's the actual speed. I usually tap it, you know, a low RPM. Uh, sorry, thread, I usually thread it a low RPM, also tap it a low RPM. And there's the finished part. So I'm just giving these a quick tickle on the uh, belt sander here, on the old wall down grinder. And uh, no doubt my chihuahuas must have seen a cat and sorry about the barking, but they're off to attack something. Uh, this is hang surface drill and tap fluid. It's really, really good stuff. I get it off live tools. Um, this was a sample bottle that they sent me, hence why the little plug for live tools. Thank you, live tools. Uh, I'm just going to mark this here where my thread position is going to go. This is the uh, M6 by 1mm pitch. Once again, coming with that button die holder that I made for the tailstock and just uh, letting it feed itself in, find its way home and pull itself in. And we'll speed this up now. Uh, the video is shown here at 400%. Just hit it with a wire brush just to clean those threads. And then I'll zoom in and take you in for a little bit closer look. And uh, just got to try and get it to focus. There we are. But not a bad looking thread. Uh, back once again on the linisher, just on that disc sander there, give it a little bit of a tickle. Uh, put a slight taper on it so I've got a lead in and uh, it's all done, guys. There it is there. So they all went in no problems at all and I did a test fit with the cylinder head. Not a problem. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Bye bye.